everyone, it's Julia here from Inflorescence Designs. Today's video tutorial is a little less formal. Um, I just wanted to share with those who purchase or might be thinking of purchasing any of my kind of more complicated quilt block patterns. This video just shows how I organize them and how each section helps you walk through the pattern very easily because some of these patterns yes they do have over 200 pieces not this particular one but some do and it can be a little overwhelming especially if you're new or even if you're seasoned um, I walk you through the steps on each section and how I put it together so I hope you enjoy and let's get started all right so I'm going to walk through how I piece together all of my monster blocks. So in your pattern, I have them split down into sections because I mean, there's a lot of pieces and it can get overwhelming. So as you can see, all of my pieces are labeled. It is a little crazy looking. Maybe yours would be a little more organized. That's not how I roll, but so what I like to do is for each section, I look at the pieces I need. So I need a number one. So I need to find my number one in this mess. Here's my number one. And since this is my last one, I just put that off to the side. I need, it looks like I need one letter E, one letter E, it's right here. And the way I pin them is I just put them straight through that way I can just pull one off or however many off I need. I need one D. And then let's see, I need one, two, three letter K's. One, two, three. Now I need the black pieces. I need one letter O, one letter P, a letter R, and a letter Q. So what I, these are all the last of these, so I will get rid of the papers. Now you might want to keep the papers on or keep them nearby. Um, I mean, the letter P and Q are similar in size, but you can always look back and reference the cutting page. I believe they're one inch different. Um, so what I do now is I will take these pieces just for this section over to my pressing station, which we will go over there, and I have a mat down. I like to put a little bit of fabric stiffener on here. It just makes pacing a lot easier. So I will line these up. Spray them down just lightly. I don't really coat them very much. Just enough so they don't warp on me. It's light. And I'm running low. You kind of hear that. And then I just press them. mishap here. I'm doing this all one-handed, so bear with me. I got a little bit of crease in that one. I'll probably redo that one. Anyway, so then what I'll do is I will take all of these back over to my pattern. And they're a lot stiffer now, especially those one and a half inch squares. And there's a lot of them in the pattern. So now what I'll do is I'll look what's next. All right, we've got our letter O and my letter K. So that's gonna go in that corner. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a line the same direction as that, and that is what I will sew on. But before I get to that, I'm gonna line up my letter D and my letter R goes in that top corner. And then my letter P, which I know by looking at up here, it's the longer one. P and my K goes over here. 
And then my other pieces, don't need them right now. Um, I will, I already know because I know what's coming up next that my letter A is going to have the letter E. I can see it right there and it's going to be down in this corner. But that's on the back side of the pattern. So I will be back. I'm going to draw a line on each of those squares for the corners and then we'll get sewing. All right. I have drawn my diagonal line from corner to corner in the direction that the pattern states. Um, and I and I know from experience that it's very important to check the direction of the stitch line before trimming because I have not. And then I've had to cut out pieces again and start over. So we are just going to sew directly on this line. to corner and we will do that with all four pieces in this section and I try to break the sections down so that there's minimal amount and it's just easy to work with and I'm doing this one-handed too so hopefully they don't slip on me If you have a piece that it has two different easy corner triangles on each side you will just clip it and do the same process on the other side again watching the direction of your line this particular section does not have that so what I will do now is I will snip all these and then I will cut these to a quarter of an inch all right so I trim them all to a quarter of an inch and we will take these over to the ironing station and press them. Now in the directions I state to press the seams open. You do you. If you prefer just to press to one side, you can do that. Um, I'm going to do that here just because I'm doing this one handed. Sometimes the seams can get bulky, especially when there's a lot of pieces but whichever is your preference. I know some people prefer seams open for everything. Some just play it by ear. For this part of this particular pattern, it really doesn't matter because the seams don't really overlap. So then we've got those pressed and we're going to take it back over and turn the page on our pattern because then our pattern will in the same section show us how to arrange them and assemble so we've got our pieces and we have our extra pieces that we didn't use yet so i like to just look at the first one all right we've got Letter A. Oh, I'm actually looking at the wrong one. I turned it over. So that was the other side. So that actually goes back there. Here we go, because these are the part of the ears. So they just are mirror images of each other. And what threw me off was that piece. So we're working on this one. So we're going to look at this right here. And we've got our big yellow piece right here. This piece goes right here. This one down. Sorry, it's so shaky. And then we've got our O, which is plain. That piece and that piece. So then the directions walk you through which pieces to connect. So the first thing we're going to connect is these two. We're going to sew along this right here. And we're going to connect these two. So we'll sew there and there. And that shows you right there the plus sign. O plus that piece, that piece, that, bleh, that piece plus that piece. So I'm going to sew those. And then I'm going to continue on. And what I'll do next is I'll sew this piece to this piece. 
and then the two pieces down here that I will sew, they get sewn together. And then finally, this piece will get sewn to this full piece. All right, it's all sewn together. We did that, that, and that, and now we're left with that. So we're gonna go over and press it. Now you can press as you go. Certain things I do press as I go, certain things I just sew it all together and then press it. That's just a personal preference. And again, I did not open the seams. Again, personal preference, I do suggest it if you're new to this or you don't like bulky seams or maybe your machine doesn't like bulky seams. And there it is. That is how you piece together using my patterns. And then what I'll do next is I've already got these pieces and I will sew those three together. And what that does, like I said, it walks you through. So next is section four and that's a little more involved that has the eyes and section five it goes all the way through each section until we get to the very end and you have each piece section made and you just have to sew them together thanks for watching i hope this helps